So am I. Eat. We're live, everybody! We're gonna do the campaign murder hobo your man tonight! I uh, believe dude, he's not a bard. I can't believe Monday Night Football hasn't called him. That's, uh, you know, the thing. <laughs> Is that uh, Monday Night Football? Folks, yeah, they play Monday Night Football. Oh. Steelers won last Monday night. Folks, it's Saturday night. You know what that means? It's Murder Hobo Inc. Uh, as you can tell from the players, it is campaign night. And there's going to be a lot of questions, a lot of answers, a lot of problems, a lot of drama, maybe a lot of killing. Haven't decided yet. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to buy our cool stuff, it's down there. Uh, if you want to join us in Discord, chat D&D with us. It's down there. Uh, most importantly, dice. God damn it. And it's it's buried, man. It is buried deep now. <laughs> I organized, I cleaned everything, and I put dice at the very bottom of the pile. <laughs> most importantly, if you're looking to replace Kyle on future games, M Hobo Inc., Twitch, uh, or I'm sorry, Twitter, uh, Gmail, hit us up, let us know. Uh, next Saturday, we have a one shot, and believe it or not, four new players. Uh, what? What? Uh, two We're getting them, a break? Two, two of them have <laughs> have one under their belt. One's got a uh, talk show and one has a game under their belt. But four new players. Thank God. Maybe I'll have some real fucking heroes playing here. Uh, let us not forget Pirate Dog Dice, whose dice uh, tend to roll a little bit high. Uh, and that makes my game stink. But fortunately, oddfishgames.com will always make... Ah, your games smell a whole lot better. Oddfishgames.com. Check them out. Uh, folks, before I get into the boring and somewhat intangible background, let's introduce your cast for the night. First one up is Ernest. Ernest, who are you? Who are you playing? Uh, so I'm Ernest, oh, and I'm playing uh, Lucas the uh, Druid. And right now I am not resisting arrest. I want that to be noted. So noted. I'm cooperating. <laughs> Next up is Chris. <laughs> uh, my name is Chris. I'm playing Miniz, the air cocker cleric. Uh, I'm a mini painter, stream full time. And I, like my, my fellow compatriot Lucas, am going quietly <laughs> and peacefully <laughs> with both wings up. <laughs> uh, what is your website for your stream? And when uh, well, it's on next. Twitch under uh, CG Mini Painting. And when you stream it next? Uh, Wednesday, well, tomorrow, and then Wednesday to Thursday, uh, Friday. There you go, folks. I don't Check even know out. my own schedule. I actually know his schedule. I don't know the weekend one, but I know his schedule for the weekdays. Stop it's a little <laughs> creepy. No. Yeah. No, it's good. It was on, on doesn't even know where he's going to be at those days. <laughs> don't, don't worry, Chris. She can't cross the border. Thank you for the imaginary. Not till almost ball. November. That's right. Uh, next up is Kyle, who can't get enough of his green screen. I love my green screen and my green shirt. Uh, hi, I'm <laughs> Kyle, and uh, uh, tonight I'm going to be doing Doc uh, uh I've been replaced on the talk show by someone with much less facial hair and much more head on top of hair hair. Joe, uh -huh. the DM. No, I'm going to kill everyone tonight. And Joe, Joe the DM will be playing next Saturday. Screw him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and last but certainly not least, the newest member, although she's an old hat at it now, yeah. Carol. Hey, everyone. I'm Carol. I'm also a commissioned mini painter, although I don't stream. But I will say I have now caught Chris's stream, and it's really good. And it starts on the weekdays at noon and goes till whenever he feels like, I think. Uh, uh, Carol, you got a little long something on your nose together. there? Yeah, no, it's it is. It's really good. I enjoy it. I mean, I listen to it while I'm working. So, um, but I said I'm a commission mini painter. I'm a longtime gamer, sometimes GM, and I am playing Taryn, my wood elf or half wood elf, half high elf bard. And we're all fucked. Get my hand out. Long quietly, like everyone else. Dewey didn't say he was going to go along quietly. Oh, he didn't. I did notice that. Uh, no, no. I am going to be a uh, 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 key in this skill. Are no, you sure that's no key? One? I don't know which one is which, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, let's go ahead and do a recap before we dig our holes here. Uh, I'm not associated with that guy. Holy shit. <laughs> In uh, character and out of character. Oh, you know what? You know what? That is Peel. Yeah, Jordan Peel. Michael Thank Keegan. You. Yeah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the Twilight Zone. Always remember that. Dude, Twilight, Twilight Zone. Zone. Uh, yeah, he's redoing it, and he does a, he does a nice oh, job. Is it any like good? He yeah, he do, he do, everything he does is good. Uh, he touches shit, and it's magic. I don't Folks, know if uh, you haven't seen the show or you have seen the show, uh, here's a little quick recap for you guys. These guys are all heroes. Uh, they have unleashed evil accidentally. I'll give them that. They accidentally unleashed evil, and now they have spent the last 38 episodes trying to get it back in the box with Gwyneth Paltrow's head uh, among Dewey or, or Lucas or Perpetua. Uh, I think Chris and Taryn have not been in the box yet. Nope. At uh, this time. Uh, no, so, so. Yeah. They, are, they have worked their way uh, down the coast or down the center of the uh, country, uh, as the case may be, and they have found themselves into Yaddle after many, many successful and unsuccessful ventures, many stories, uh, some good, some bad, some Jesus Christ, there's no way you're fucking heroes. Uh, and last episode, they were going through the catacombs to laugh at Dewey's mentor, Alvin Knackle, <laughs> 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 when they uh, discovered that he, his desiccated corpse, of course, had information on the second piece of a three-part artifact. They are in possession of part one and the trigger item, which is a box. Uh, they successfully managed to work their way through the crypts despite... Uh, freaking cultists and other sacks of shit trying to prevent them the scenario ended with them climbing essentially the statue of liberty and facing off with Terran's evil twin sister aka noctia the bitch uh they killed her uh but we just did. like lazarus Terran brought her back um they have now all been taken custody by Lord Bushmill and his troops. Uh, lady and gentlemen, as you're coming ashore on Lord Bushmill's longboat, you notice that there is a dead black dragon floating in the bay around the area where your tunnel took a rather egregious hit and started leaking water. You also notice there- Black dragon no floating dead in the bay. Nice. As the tide washes <laughs> blood in the way. Uh, the bay is no longer home to any Fulton warships, as each and every one of them have been turned into splinters and debris. Uh, sailors and warriors from both sides of this uh, conflict can be found floating, uh, heavily damaged, burnt by acid, burnt by fire, impaled by arrows, floating through the water as the five of you, including Noctia, uh, head silently along the water towards the shore, you see a second dragon kind of dog paddling towards the shore. Nobody seems to give a shit about it, uh, which I guess means it's not a threat to you. Uh, several of Lord Bushmill's troops are floating face down in the water, and Noctia... Who spits on him and receives a punch to the face uh, and nearly goes over. Bushmill raises his finger and his men regain their composure. As you reach the shoreline, you can tell that if it ain't on fire, it's damaged. Bodies litter the dock area, both in the water and out of the water. Uh, the Walking Dead, no affiliation with the TV show, so no copyright infringement there, uh, are meandering along the docks, examining the damage. The carnage is unreal. Uh, the battle above ground while you were underground must have been horrific. Uh, there are dead guards, dead military, dead kids, uh, dead citizens, buildings crumbled, buildings on fire. Uh, a rope is thrown. Uh, and you guys dock. Uh, everybody, perception check. Oh, I'm not ready. I don't have my dice ready yet. 
Oh no, perception. 11. Oh. 20, 21. Uh, perception, uh, nine. My knees. Bye. Lucas, uh, you notice that the bronze dragon uh, makes it to shore, but turns into a young bronze skinned female. You remember her as she looks familiar because she was at Fink. I Alina know. Jolie. Fink. Fink. You know Have what? I been to Fink? Yes. Re- yeah. Okay. You were the cat. Oh, yeah, that's right. Tara, you don't remember shit because you didn't see her. <laughs> Same here. I'm pretty uh, sure I could see her. No, right now. Right now. Oh, no, I, all right. Yeah, no, that's what I was going to say. Is Carol remembers. Taryn doesn't see her though. Correct. Right uh, the city is on fire and or flattened. Uh, uh, oh, uh, Lucas, you also see Sonora over a child, both dead. Her efforts at trying to save the infant failed as one of the roof rafters went through her chest and into the child it is a scene of immense yeah it's a scene of immense despair and he laughs <laughs> this is uh, great a cadre of guards is there to greet lord bushmill and he orders everyone to be taken down to the government building as you wind through the street that just yesterday was teeming with life and teeming with activity it is a ghost town. It is Berlin, 1945. Everything close to the dock is pretty much fucked. Uh, there are bodies, body parts, half bodies, dead mounts, dead workhorses. Fucking everything is is bad. You Question. got yes. Can I? Were they all like burned by the dragon fire or dragon attacks, or was it like, or is it wounds? Or both. Mi- mixture. Uh, rubble, bludgeoning damage, piercing damage from uh, stray targets, trebuchet bolts. Yeah. Uh, so- a lot of damage. Uh, a lot of uh, horrific damage. Uh, you guys get to the center of the city where the military had set up their camp. You are escorted by about 20 or so individuals. Uh, you are taken into the basement of the government building. Oh, hold, hold on. on. I will now not go peacefully. I'll start killing everyone now. In the middle of the army camp. You know, it's better to be safe. I'm not with this guy. Remember. (laughs) You're on your own. You want to fight? (laughs) You're on your own, dude. (laughs) Okay, okay. I'm sorry. I had to interrupt, though. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I, I, I had prepared already for somebody deciding they wouldn't go peacefully. I'm more than ready to deal with that. <laughs> we tackled or anything? No, you are not under arrest. Oh, 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 well, then I'm definitely cooperating because this means there's less uh, chance of harm to my person. Noctia <laughs> is the only one with her hands bound because clearly Noctia is recognized. Taryn has more guards hovering around her, but You're welcome. they don't seem to feel that she's Noctia. It's like they know. I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> It'll Maybe make sense here in a few everybody. minutes. You can tell the difference because one of them has an eye patch and a parent on well, the It wasn't for the fact that... And a sword I, sticking out of her chest. I, I would so totally do something... Wait, like that's that. Taryn. <laughs> But oh, I'm not going to. Um, oh, I would so do something right now. But go ahead. I I I am very ill prepared on this. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's screw them over, guys. Straight line. We cooperate the entire way. <laughs> He'll never say it coming. Uh, Lucas, you do have a choice. <laughs> I call my lawyer. <laughs> You are taken. Do I have the right to a phone call? You are stripped of all your weapons and items. You go. are placed in three cells. Taryn is in a cell by herself. Noctia is in the cell across. <laughs> Maniz and Lucas are in a cell amongst themselves next to Taryn. Uh, the bars. What about Dewey? I'm with you. He's in there with you guys. Oh, okay. okay. The bars are enough that you and Taryn can communicate. You could pass notes if you wanted. 
uh, but all of your stuff, including both pieces of the artifact and the box held by Terran, are in the custody of Lord Bushmill's men. Uh, does anybody want to ask the guards anything? Um, I turn to Lucas and Meniz. If you try to tattoo me, arrested, I will why die. Why are <laughs> <laughs> don't don't worry. I'm gonna try and uh, rest while I can. Yeah, oh, I'm gonna start meditating. Uh, I do have a question for the guards. Yep. Uh, so so uh, what happened with the what happened with the dragons? I mean, how did, did anybody see how why or how they showed up? Well, the guard probably to answer and a booming voice is heard from the shadows of the cell next to Noctia. Shut up, bitch. Nobody cares what you think. Uh, and a gnome appears, a battle scarred gnome, uh, looking like he could con control himself, but clearly he's trying to sleep and you pissed him off. He looks at Dewey. <laughs> Yeah, and looks away and goes back to sleep. I don't give two shits. He's behind bars. Taryn, uh, the guard says th the dragon was what was attacking the city. The other dragon uh, is an associate of Lord Bushmills and is severely wounded. She has been taken to the temple. She is not expected to live. Actually, I think before when we were going to the statue, I did see both dragons, didn't I? One black dragon floating in the bay, one bronze right. dragon climbing above shore. I did, I did see the bronze dragon. Oh, no, no, no. Last last session. I didn't see it this time, but I'm pretty sure I, we saw both dragons last time. So I do know there's a bronze dragon in the oh, area. Oh, you guys I, all saw the bronze dragon. Yeah. Only Lucas saw the bronze dragon turn into the female. Oh, so, so I'll go. Oh, see, I rem oh, I do remember because so she's working for Bushmill. I've seen her. Yeah, I, just, I remember seeing her in Fink. The guard begins to give a long dissertation on what happened when the sergeant comes down and says, up here, now. Uh, you guys are left to your own devices behind locked doors, locked gates. The gnome uh, that told you to shut up has returned to the shadows, but now that you watched him, you know exactly where he is. Noctia goes over to a ramshackle bed and begins to lay down, rubbing her temples. Anybody else want to say anything? Because <laughs> I let you all go. Because <laughs> I want to talk to her. I need, I need rest. Right. Yeah. yeah Did, can I, we I, get I'm... like a long rest in here? Or... Oh, yeah, yeah okay, you'll get a long, do a long rest. Uh, one other thing. I'd safe to assume they weren't going to allow me to heal myself. Right. Uh, that, is, that is correct. You can try and heal yourself. I got a uh, messy shoulder. Will, I'm going. You will find the... magic does not work here. So she's. So I have a messed up shoulder, and they're all the friggin' crap kicked out of them. Mm -hmm. Especially when uh, the guards so return good. with pots and bowls. Uh, feeding time before your interviews. All right. Who wants to take a bowl? I guess I will. Lucas, Maniz. Yeah, I'll take one. I'll take I'll take a bowl, but I will, um, you know, pretend like I'm going to eat out of it and just wait to see what everybody else does first. Sure. <laughs> I ain't eating first. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> uh, the gnome also steps up. Noctia does not move. Uh, the gnome wastes no time in downing it. Uh, clearly, he was parched. He, wait, is the gnome the in prison or is the gnome okay okay it I is you Terran, noctia no. Gnome. no okay i thought the gnome was another guard okay no and there are several other cells here uh, mm -hmm. they are all empty at this time uh the gnome bangs the bowl on the uh bars and asks for another uh the guard looks at noctia who clearly doesn't give a fuck and he gives him her share uh he downs it just as quickly throws the bowl into the hallway and goes back to sleep uh Maniz, it would appear as though uh the gruel is edible i will 
<laughs> Eat away. You guys can do con checks to see if you like it or don't like it. It is not poisoned. It is not a toxin. It it's awful. Safe. It's the worst shit I've ever eaten because I rolled a nat one. 21. It's gnome food, apparently. <laughs> a con. I, can I have yours, Taryn? Uh, Taryn rolled a 12. Taryn found the band aid. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and I uh, push it back towards Taryn. Lucas, uh, what was yours? 13. Yeah. Uh, Lucas and Manise, yeah, it's okay. Uh, Dewey seems to like it. The gnome clearly liked it as well. Noctia is just laying down in her bunk. I'll, I'll call out to her because I definitely want to talk to her. <gasps> yeah, you're right to turn it down, sister, because it's pretty awful. Why are you here? <laughs> Go to hell, Taryn. Ah, uh, come now. It's been about, what, a hundred years since we last saw each other? How about we make it a hundred and one and you just shut the fuck up? We'll be a hundred and... Next forever. year it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think... I don't think I'm going to shut up in spite of your... You're stuck here. You might as well talk to me. We're stuck here too. Shut up, Taryn. No. <laughs> your fault. You know, you guys could pee into her cell if you want. <laughs> I just say I'll just sit away from the uh, heads. How, how wide are these cells? Because I'm pretty sure I got some range. <laughs> <laughs> Push on my ass cheeks, Dewey. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead and ask any questions. Let's see if she answers any of them. Why, why did you, are you looking for what we're looking for? Why did you come? Peace and quiet? Yes, yes, I am looking for the exact same thing. Taryn, don't give anything away to our enemy. Really, like, <sighs> I don't think we should be talking to her. She obviously isn't going to work with us. Uh, listen to the other point here. <laughs> I would like to know something about her. Okay, well, either way, don't give away our secrets. I'm a Taurus. I enjoy long walks on the beach and men who hold doors open for me. My turnoffs are women that talk to me incessantly while I'm trying to sleep and get rid of my headache. Well, good. You're go I'm going to keep talking to you until I get... Karen, is your sister seeing anybody? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Are you seeing anybody? Are you seeing Io? Is that why uh... you want to Tell the short guy if he kills you, I'll do anything he wants. Anything. <sighs> kind of got those bars. Oh, shit. Taryn's about uh. to die. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the other side, and he's got very. Oh, Taryn, Taryn, you missed a little bit of the band aid on your face. If you can lean over to bars, I can get it for you. I, I literally. <laughs> <laughs> whole lot of bird flipping off folks if you missed it uh mature audiences only but i'm sure you figured that out by now go ahead taryn uh, just come on i said i will stop talking if you just give me a few answers why in the hell would she you sits, work she sits up for and looks across i look across back <laughs> all right i'll keep talking then you haven't asked your fucking question. I did. Why Why do you work for IO? How did you get roped in with him? He hates anyone that isn't human. Why the hell are you his admirable? Admiral. That, blah, 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 blah. Because Tell I'm me. a hell of a killer. That's why. He pays me good. I get rewards. He gave me ships. He gives me the necessary positive feedback that you and our parents never did. You never came for me after I was abducted. You just disregarded me as living at all. That's Make kind you of feel shitty. good, sis? That's, that's not true. They did look for you. They just couldn't find you. Oh, did you look for me? I'm 20, he's 20 freaking five years old. I mean, we were both kids. Did you look for me last week? 
Did you look for me last month? I didn't know you were. No, you did not. You did not. You did not. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. But you know why I wouldn't have looked for you last month? I kind of haven't been home. And I'm pretty sure you know why. For all I know, you're part of the reason why I'm not at home. Oh, it's all on me. I'm sorry. I got kidnapped, <laughs> and then I, I made sure that you never got home. I got it. I, no, I'm no, the no, bad no, guy. Hey, hey, hey. No, 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 no. I don't know, okay? I'm looking for answers. That's all. I don't know if you... I'm pretty sure your boss set me up and set up our my parents, our parents. Oh, my yeah. parents, not ours, mine. Got it. I yeah. see what it is. Freudian <laughs> slip. Yeah, that that wasn't crazy. Bill Freud from Fulton. Oh, I got it. I suck. Um, God wore, wore the slip. Uh, I'm pretty sure your boss, Io, had everything to do with it. Uh, hey, what was that you meant by when you shanked me? Pretty good. You said to tell mom and dad hello. I just talked to mom last night. She was alive. Probably last night. What do you oh, know? Did you talk to dad? Bet not. Didn't talk to dad, did you? <laughs> no. no. You didn't think about messaging me? No, you didn't, did you? you no. Here. Just, mom. Why? Just why? your mom. You thought about you. Taryn is always the most important one. No, that's bull. You clearly didn't want much did, to do Did it. you try and message me? Did you try and message me last year? Did you try and message me the year before? I didn't have you don't like those all answers. Whoa, 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 whoa. I just learned to do it like what two days ago. Very new talent. <laughs> Couldn't message you until you said I think it was like when did we go up a level two days ago? Game why don't time? you uh why don't you message mom now? See what she has to say. Um I may do that. But it probably won't be mom. You know what? Why don't you do that and you let me know how that goes. I'm going to go over here and get some sh get some shut eye. The gnome stands up and yells again. Would you shut the fuck up? I'm trying to sleep. What time of the day? Sorry, out of game. What time of the day is it? Late afternoon, early evening. So it's, yeah, it's not even like dinner time. Well, or when you fight time. all day, you're tired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, you just had dinner. Yeah, it was delicious, of. but you sort of. you didn't like it. No, I don't think she ate much of it. Uh, you gave me some answers. I will let you rest. Obviously, I need some rest too. The great Marstan approves. She rolls over. The guards come back down uh, and come to your two cells and says. You were to be interviewed in the morning on a few items that Lord Bushmill has a question. He turns around, says the same thing to Nocti and the gnome. The gnome responds by urinating through the cells. <laughs> <laughs> Guards storm off. The gnome lays back down and goes back to sleep. About a half hour later, you hear him sawing fucking wood. No matter. I just meditate. Actually, no. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna cast sending. <sighs> but it's not to mom. Magic doesn't work. Oh, that's right. Magic doesn't. Yeah. So, let's see what was the burn? Point? Burn the spell slot. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm gonna be stuck in here anyway, so it doesn't doesn't really friggin' matter. Anybody else want to do anything tonight? I mean, I'm going to rest and then, I don't know, whittle down that silverware, like I said. <laughs> is, uh, is Dewey awake? <laughs> yeah, Dewey is uh, uh, propped up in a corner. Very sad. <laughs> <laughs> Protecting his anus. <laughs> well, his dad just died. <laughs> I don't blame him. That <laughs> happened in pink. Uh, I'll actually, Dewey, does that? Gnome over there, one of your enemies. Mm. 
<laughs> are all gnomes the same? <laughs> Do, are they all wow. related? <laughs> wow. wow! Wow! Way to be way to go, racist card. <laughs> <laughs> Dewey, that's a gnome. Do you know him? <laughs> that's not what I asked. Canadians get it all the time. Dewey, don't talk to that tabaxi over there. They're a dirty race. All, all of his insignias have been stripped away. He was captured earlier than you guys were. So if he did have any uh, indicators, uh, oh, they would not be so, present. So there's no way anybody would know. He, he's dressed in pants and an undershirt. That's it. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, Dewey is sitting in a corner. If you try to talk to him, he just turns away. He doesn't want to talk to you. Depressed over Alvin still. Still, yeah, no, absolutely. Fresh, I, still fresh. At this point, you know, this is the cool down time and everything comes back to hit him. So, you know, <laughs> while he's not looking at Taryn, he is eyeballing, Man or not Man, he's Lucas, who's in the room with him. Are, are there uh, any blankets in here? No, you can call for some. Maybe they'll give them to you. Um, I'll take the, the shirt off myself and I'll, I'll drape it over Dewey's shoulders. I'm like, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I tried to console him. Snap. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you snap? <laughs> Dewey? Your neck like a twig. <laughs> yeah. Dewey. Dewey, we're sorry. But. Oh, I, I'm not with her, Dewey. I, no, I'm, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's only through my connection that you did something wrong that she did something wrong. Actually, we had to open it. We did have to open it, didn't we? I didn't try to open it, do we? <laughs> no, he did, though. And he retrieved what was there. Do we still have the utensils in the cell? They're just wooden spoons. Now it's Kill a... Kill him with a wooden spoon. <laughs> <laughs> Folks at home, uh, the group uh, has been uh, vehemently requesting a little bit of reflection time so that they can discuss their status. Uh, that is uh, what we are doing right now. I am letting them Please. vent and uh, discuss things as they need before the morning when they get to be interviewed by Lord Bushmill. Pray continue, party. <sighs> I Is think we're good. <laughs> you need to give us more time. You need to give us more time. That's good. <laughs> no, that's good. <laughs> we've had we've had enough time now. Hey, wait, he can speak for himself. I'll keep trying. Dewey. Is there anything we can say or do to make this right? Are you just gonna ignore me? Or are you Yeah, no, he's sulking. Mind you, this is that negative three charisma no. working here. No, it's no, it's okay. No, it's no. Keep rolling with this. Keep rolling with this. And because I would keep trying um, to a degree, but all right, I get it. I get it. I I'll leave you alone because honestly, you probably you need some time. But if you want to talk, you know, I'm I'm not going anywhere. I'll be in the corner trying to rest the gnome stops snoring and gets up walks over to the bars i'm not talking that loud for starters trust me it's grating <laughs> Lean, <laughs> leans over to the bars and looks at dewey and he goes hey did you lose somebody important yeah good shut up <laughs> he goes back to bed. get him dewey <laughs> Yeah, I'll chuck the spoon at him. <laughs> Go ahead and hit him with the dexterity as a modifier. All right. I can do that. Right in the eye. Right in the eye, Dewey. 19. Oh, just... <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you hit him. <laughs> One hit point of damage. Yeah, I don't mind. Not even his strength. <laughs> it's a wooden spoon. Just sharpened it into a chain. <laughs> Only Alan Rickman can make it hurt with a wooden spoon. Robin Hood, <laughs> Prince of Thieves. Um, It'll hurt. A anything else you guys want to discuss tonight? I mean, other than that, I think I'm all right with the other two guys. For I don't know. Yeah, Manise hasn't talked in like a day. 
He's <laughs> rushing you. <laughs> they said hands up. You got it. <laughs> That's it. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Maniz is the most innocent one in our party. <laughs> As she wished, dude. Uh, tell that to somebody who got pooped on <laughs> up north. That was an accident. I did. <laughs> uh, anybody, I ate something. Yeah, the elves who will meditate. Uh, you'll notice that the guards have irregular shifts to keep you on your toes. Uh, they just look in on you from time to time, make sure everybody's breathing, nobody's shanked each other, uh, and they go away. In the morning, uh, another lackey comes down with another bucket of gruel. Uh, who wants breakfast? Oh, I'll take breakfast. No, um, stands up. Noctia stands up. Taryn stands up. I'll Nate. take it. It's better this time. Yeah, I'll take it this time. Everybody roll. Roll what? Uh, Con. Con. That's 16, so for some reason it was markedly improved. There's berries in it this time. Dirty 20. Dingle Seven. berries. Uh, your berries. counterpart got a 19. Yeah, It's gnome food. The chef is clearly yeah. a gnome. And Noctia got a 12, so she can stomach it too. Uh, a set of guards comes down. One of you is Hannes, the gnome. Ooh. Tap, tap, tap. Uh, you're up first. Uh, the cadre of guards has him come out. They escort him up the stairs. Yeah, can I reach out to one of the guards real quick? Can what? you be rough with him? He's a jerk. Only if he's rough with me. The gnome turns around and he goes, disgruntled lover <laughs> and walks up the stairs about a half hour later he has returned looks exactly the same doesn't get roughed up goes back to the cell <clears throat> you hear him eating something like a cookie snitch <laughs> next up is i want to go i want to go dewey Oh, da, da, da. Uh, Dewey, uh, yeah. you are led upstairs. Uh, Bushmill, a female named Lady Odessa, uh, Pastor Hemlade from the Temple of Luck, and an old human dude, bald, bearded, holding a book, looks like a sage, uh, introduces himself as Rotarus, R O T A R U S. Uh, Lord Bushmill asks your full name. Do, do we Dockamel? Mr. Dockamel, first off, thank you for the letter. I appreciate the information. Uh, I mean, yeah, you were looking for your son. It seemed the only right thing to do. I have a few questions. Uh, the first question I have for you who is Perpetua the Changeling? And how do you know her? Well, she was a, a graduate of the late Academy of Heroes, where, where we all are. If you look at my personal belongings, you'll, you'll, you'll see the armband for that. Um, yeah, but she and I were uh, graduates from there. And, and she, uh, 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 according to the Oracle, she, she had her family killed by a bunch of gnomes. Lucas and Menezes, too, come to think. Everyone's dying. Rotaris asks, how do you know that the Academy has been sundered? Well, we got news of it. Meniz said he heard about it falling. Unless it was Perpetua. I don't recall off the top of my head, honestly. I think it was one of those two. From here on out, each and every one of you will be called up, but I'm going to go ahead and scramble the order of the questions uh, just to kind of spice it up. Uh, oh. The next one up. Uh, Lucas. Yeah. Uh, you are introduced to the quartet. And this time, Odessa, the lady, starts off with, uh, where is the box that impris imprisons evil? Is this it? Uh, and she holds up 
the box taken from Taryn's belongings. Uh, yeah, that looks like the box we were tasked with uh, keeping with us to imprison evil and save the world. Yeah. Did it not initially hold evil, says uh, Pastor Hemelade. Hemelade. Yes, it did. Are you responsible for letting it out? Uh, accidentally, yes. But the school did not blame us for this. And in fact, they were the they tasked us to contain the evil back into it. Who tasked you with that? Uh, I think the headmaster's assistant, since the headmaster immediately went unconscious when the evil was released. So you're saying the headmaster was not in charge of the school at the time that it fell? Uh, I don't believe so unless he regained consciousness, but I think his consciousness was somehow tied to the evil that was released. Aaron, you are introduced to the ensemble. And uh, Lord Bushmill asks you, are you truly Perpetua the Changeling? No. <laughs> I'm Taryn Alindri or Taranilia Alindriel Amontarel. The same Taryn Alindriel Amontarel that was that you met in Fink. I am not Perpetua. I don't know why people think I'm Perpetua, but I'm not. Oh yeah, that was me, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it was more than oh. <clears throat> ever tell you a joke. <laughs> Uh, Rotaris uh, kind of waves to you and he asks a question. Uh, I understand that you are working with General Io, but I do not understand what capacity you are working with him as. Can you elaborate on that? Well, since you changed the question a bit, uh, I, I raised an eyebrow and... Voice. Oh, I'm sorry. Was I supposed to just give you guys no. softballs? <laughs> Like, I like yes. It. I love it. Now I'm all confused. <laughs> Please, you're innocent. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't need to refer to my answers. That's what it means. Uh, what I look at them like, or I look at look at them like, what? Uh, I'm not working with General Io. I don't even like the man. I, as far as I know, um, my sister's working with him. But that's all I know. Oh, 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 the pastor steps up. My dear reverend daughter, do you love your sister? I haven't seen her in a hundred years. That doesn't really answer the question now, does it? Well, it makes it a lot more complicated. I, do, I haven't seen her in a hundred years. I mean, I saw her once in passing about six months ago in Fulton. Was that at a meeting with General Io? No. I do not work for Io. I have been on the road for the last six months on the road and actually helping them trying to put evil back in that box. How did they let evil escape? I don't know. They let evil escape before I was part of the party. So in your opinion, was it... A mistake or was this a uh, intentional act that perhaps they were put up by io to do no i no they aren't working for io hates non-humans except for apparently my sister i don't quite get it but he clearly does not like non-humans if you pay any attention to what's been going on in fulton so, so I should I should pay more attention to Fulton. Well, obviously, maybe you should have. Maybe that's why there's a freaking war on your doorstep. So it's my fault. Oh. <laughs> the war, I don't know anything about why this war is... I know nothing about this war. Several no. questions later, Dewey. So <laughs> tell me, why, do you, why is it that you people skin others? <laughs> you people. Do you hear that, Dewey? Your letter that I received clearly states that you're, you and your associates have been known to skin people. We have checked into this and we have found that that is an accurate statement. We would like to know why this is done. Uh, 
Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> I'm sure that was a great answer, too. Damn it. <laughs> uh, I've, I've, never, I've never skinned anyone in my life. Uh, uh, Lucas and Perpetua like to skin people, and, and I've seen them take their dicks and wear them around their necks before, too. Oh, shit. I have done that, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I didn't know In that. fact, I was wearing the dick when they took my... Yeah, I, yeah, there's... Uh, yeah. Mm. Oh, shit. I did not know that part. Wow. I, I don't know why they do that. It's... Uh, uh, Lucas was raised by wolves. <laughs> I, I don't know of any wolves that actually wear dicks around their necks. <laughs> it could be yes, after a few more questions, uh, they wolves. paw through your belongings and they ask if you have any unusual trinkets. <laughs> You're <laughs> muted. <laughs> <laughs> You're muted. I yeah no I'm just nodding I'm like it's not my it's not my it's not my turn I'm not there right no I I've come to you again oh oh I, I yeah so ask if I have weird trinkets well um find weird <laughs> oh that that necklace yeah it's it's a sign of power and virility <laughs> it's a druid thing you want to understand. Uh, back to Odessa. Uh, what exactly do you know of this cult of Sensua, and how do they play into your being in Yatal? Cult of Sensua, uh, from what I understand about them from reading and encountering them, is they are trying to spread evil, which is obviously makes us uh, enemies of ours because we're trying to do the opposite and contain it. Um, we you still have it. the books, right? In your backpack? Uh, Dewey does, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, we have been told by one of your associates, we won't mention his name, uh, that you participated in the skinning of your enemies? Uh, I, that? I've never skinned anyone, I've just cut off their dick. Well... <laughs> I'm certain that that is a relief. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Just to be clear. <laughs> the scene changes over to Terran again. <laughs> and they're looking at you, puzzled. Uh, they, they discuss a few things amongst themselves and go, how long have you known your associates? Um, sorry, Carol's going to think about it. How long has it been since Fink? Uh, I'll go since basically since I met you at Fink, pretty much. Maybe I don't know. Actually, I met them. I met them before they went to Torgil Manor, and I wasn't part of that whole disaster. Uh, so how long was? About how long is that? Three months. Three months. Okay. Four months, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I know it's been six since I left. So, yeah, I think it has been about that long. I think three months is about right. So, uh, yeah, three months. The there's, a, there's a tapping on the table as Lord Bushmill is rapping with his gauntlet. Were you with my son? And are you or are you not responsible for his death? And I will tell you there is a zone of truth on your chair. Do not lie to me. Then you'd know I haven't been this whole time. Um, you're, I did see your son. Uh, we were both arrested by the hobgoblins because he, well, mouthed off to them. And the, uh, he was alive and well the last time I saw him, which was, oh, God. After the Are battle. you sure? Yes. Oh, yes. No. At that point, no. At a game. <laughs> yes. He stole up when I flew off with my niece. So, Taryn would absolutely say he is still alive. He was still alive when I left uh, and headed towards Fink with uh, my niece. Would it surprise you that he's dead? <sighs> you know... He didn't know when to keep his mouth shut. Maybe he shot his mouth off and acted all tough to the wrong people. 
Tell me that's not the truth. You know, you know, you're saying well, this to, to be fair. That father. is every honestly, every single one of you. <laughs> honestly, but honestly, I don't. She wouldn't know. She wouldn't know what happened to him. He was five, and that's it. He died sometime after that. You know where? So I don't know. Scene was- shifts to Chris. What do you know about the death of my son? Oh, I know nothing. <laughs> Have Seriously, you, I, I don't. Have you I, met my son? I have a document here from one of your associates. Oh, good for you. Um, oh, I think we met him at some point. Oh, uh, but from what I remember, he was alive and well last time I saw him. <clears throat> Rotaris, uh, allows Lord Bushmill to seethe in discontent. Uh, <clears throat> allow me to ask a question. Um, do you know what happened to the bridge over Center Gap? Cent- what? The gap oh, that's... the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> the bridge. That like, bridge. Did it, right. did it not burn down? It did. Courtesy of Lucas. Other than it burning down, that's all I I don't remember who lit it on fire. I don't think it was us. It may have been. I don't know. <laughs> which, which side of the bridge were you on when it was decimated? Clearly the side that was not in <laughs> the winning side, I would assume. Where all of your associates... Do, do, listen, listen. I'm a fucking bird. Doesn't matter what side I was on. <laughs> I just fly across. I don't need no bridge. Did you fly back and rescue any of your uh, party members, maybe? I've rescued many of my party members. Uh, usually Dewey is the one that grabs on to me. <laughs> <laughs> Under the yeah, bus. Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm done. laughs> uh, but I think one jail, one interview room. That's nice. I think I've rescued mainly everybody in the party at one point or another, or at least assisted. Did them. you or did you not rescue anyone <laughs> from the opposite side of the bridge that you were on? Oh, off off topic. That's yeah. the one where I rescued Perpetua from the side of the bridge. Am I correct? No. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think it might have been the druid. I see. <laughs> the one who got himself stuck over there. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's flip back over to Dewey. Uh, in your letter received by me. Uh, you have admitted to a variety of troubling issues that you and your associates um, have perpetuated. Uh, One of the things... Are you responsible for the sinking of a ship on our western coast? Uh... I personally wasn't. I, I've never, I've never, I've never sunk a ship in my life. I have been on a boat before uh, 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 in the in the in the <laughs> Temple of Natith, uh, uh, which is you know based on destruction. One of the things to bring good luck to a boat is <clears throat> is you drill tiny holes in the boat and then seal them up with wax. Not enough to sink a boat, obviously. I mean, you have my... No, my boats are always more buoyant when they have holes in them. I but can certainly you, see you why you seal your, the hole. Your voodoo-worshipping religion would agree to something like that. So, do you know if Perpetua was responsible, perhaps in the form of a little old lady in a wagon? A little old lady in a wagon? Survivors... Of, the, of which there are one, from the sinking of the war vessel, reported a little old lady in a cart was responsible. Would this have been Perpetua? 
I, I could have. She is a changeling. She changes shape. But what I remember is the boat burned down. And the only person who does really good things about burning, uh, he burned a bridge over this gap earlier with a lightning bolt. And then he likes to throw fire around. And that would be? A Lucas. For someone who's raised by wolves, he, he, he burns a lot of things. Although, you know, uh, earlier there was a block that came on fire. That was the cult of Sensua. Uh, yeah. Luckily, the soup place next door was okay. What can you tell us about this Arakakra individual? I don't know. He's he's kind of shady. Uh, uh, he's also <laughs> from um, from Andorra as well. Uh, uh, upper Andorra, no, lower Andorra, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, but we uh, graduate at the Academy for Heroes. Um, uh, he, he's he's a difficult one. Uh, I I thought he was working with a bunch of gnomes to kidnap me earlier, and and he once killed a silver merchant who was actually a lycanthrope. Um, but we didn't know that at the time until afterwards. And I, I know it sounds weird that a, a lycanthrope would be a silver merchant. I think that was starting to throw people off, and and I don't know. Sometimes he flies away and he's gone for a couple of days. He did that with Taryn. I'm sorry. Am I boring you? Yeah, we were discussing something. Go ahead. Please continue. You have my full attention. I, I'm I'm trying to cooperate with you people and 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 you ignore me. To, you're doing it again. <laughs> I am not ignoring you. I can hear everything. <laughs> kind of feel like I'm being ignored. He's gonna fucking rage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! And everyone in the room died that day. There, there are guards around the perimeter. You're just discussing it with the four tops. Uh, let's move to Lucas. Uh, Lucas. Hola. How did Torgal Manor burn down? Was it related to the lightning bolt you attempted to throw at me? If you recall that incident. Yeah, I recall you uh, came into my bedroom while I was resting and assaulted me. So I defended myself with a lightning bolt. So the truth, you know, I'm not lying here. Uh, and to be honest, everything went pitch black. All of a sudden, I think maybe due to magic. Uh, I'm not sure what happened that caused the manor to burn down during that incident. But after everything was said and done, there were a couple dead gnomes there um and i think maybe they were the perpetrators though i wouldn't be surprised if perpetua did it she's kind of a psychopath uh <laughs> tell us about <clears throat> your bard associate oh what do you want to know <laughs> <laughs> what exactly is her motivation i understand that she is not a hero from the academy uh, no, this, in fact, the very Aris. first time I met her, she was actually a prisoner, which makes me think that she was a bad person of sorts. Um, no, I don't really know much about her. I do know that her sister is an evil person that, that murdered people <coughs> and also attacked this town. Um, so I want to be surprised if they're in cahoots. I really don't know much about her. <laughs> Is there anything we need to know about her? No one's ever asked. <laughs> uh, <coughs> hmm. Yeah, I, I guess uh, she plays the flute, I think. Um, she's not good at telling jokes. But uh, that, that's about it. I, I really, really, like I said, don't really know much about her. Odessa asks... She was not a, an original member of your group? No, no. Actually, um, we encountered her on our journey to contain evil and do good for the world, like I said. And uh, when we... When we hey, hey, 
<laughs> that's not a lie. That is totally what we're doing. <laughs> that's the entire purpose of the campaign here. Uh, and uh, yeah, when we encountered her, like I said, she she was a prisoner. Her and and some naked man were were together prisoners by some hobgoblins. Bushmill bristles in anger. Odessa looks tentatively at Bushmill. Uh, can you tell me? You guys unleashed evil, right? Yeah, li like I said previously, um, we were tasked to go to some island to pick up some berries, and there was some. Um, oh, maybe I didn't mention this. I'll tell you now. Uh, we were tasked to go to some island based on this school uh, to go pick up some berries, and when we were there, there were some, I think, uh, goblins or or orcs or something. I don't even uh, details uh, that basically killed the people of the manor in there. And we were trying to investigate and uh, there was an object that we were investigating and we accidentally opened the evil. Uh, when we went back to the school, uh, they realized that this was an accident oh. as well. And they uh, gave us information to both rectify this problem by recontaining the evil. But Taryn was not with you. No, no, no. We, we met Taryn later. Then why is this box in the possessions of Taryn? Uh, that is a good question. I actually thought it was in the possession of Dewey, who I trust. Um, maybe she stole it. One final question. This orb. Yeah. What does it do? Yeah. Uh, we learned about this from uh, the books in Dewey's possession and from Lady Torgal. This is the rod of catching or something that's supposed to work with the box to help contain evil. It's a, an artifact that is split into three parts, and that's one of the parts. Thank you. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, I don't know if anyone has told you this, but, um, <laughs> the evilest person, or I should say the evil person in our group was Perpetua. Uh, she has disappeared. I think she heard of, uh, maybe your arrival, Lord Bushmill. And, uh, and all of a sudden she, she was gone. Seething with anger. He attempts to go ahead and maintain, according to a missive that one of your associates sent to me, I would assume that you may possibly be correct. However, I will point out to you that you have also been implicated in implicated the transgression. In what, what transgression? His death. Whose death? My son's. I don't know who your son is, and I don't know anything about your son's death. Okay. Carol, or uh, Taryn, they move on to you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Don't call me late for dinner, you know. Were you and your associates responsible for this plague? If so, how? If so, why? And this would be uh, Hemlade, pastor of the Luck Temple. Uh, no. Uh, <clears throat> I no to both? No to... The only thing I will say is <laughs> I suspect whatever evil was released in the world, I mean, this happened after it. I would suspect that the plague and the blight and who knows made his freaking war. We're all talking about whatever this evil is that has been let out into the world. That's my theory. But that's a theory. You know, so I know they are not, nobody in this party is directly responsible for starting. Except Perpetua. So yeah, I will no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, <laughs> Aaron, tell us about your traveling companion of the same race, this Lucas the Anti-Druid. 
<laughs> um, I don't know. Great that they call him the anti druid too. <laughs> you, guys, you guys have thrown him under the bus with it. he sets fire to everything. <laughs> I did not throw him under the bus. As to when I answered the question about the bridge, I said I didn't see who did that because he was invisible. Um, but uh. I don't know what he's a, he's a druid. He doesn't seem to really like people much. Keeps to himself. Um, he's been a he's been he works well with us. Uh, he's really good at changing shapes, and it's been really handy in a fight. Chris, or I'm sorry, Maniz. <laughs> That's the nicest anyone's ever said anything about anyone on this show ever. Oh, oh. shit. Uh, I, I compliment <laughs> Maniz saying he's the nicer, the most goodest That's person. The least our- evil of the bunch. <laughs> yeah, because you don't do anything. Uh, <laughs> I <Maniz>. die. <laughs> we understand that you were recently in Fulton. We understand that you may or may not have been present and or responsible wholly or partially for an assassination attempt that proved fatal there. (laughs) Are you or are you not responsible for this action? Uh, Definitely. Definitely not responsible. Um, I ran into Ketchup, uh, Mustard's ex-girlfriend. Uh, okay. <laughs> Anyways, catch up. Who is a, a, an old acquaintance slash uh, girlfriend, whatever you want to call it. Lover. Uh, <laughs> lover. Lover. Um, while we did were the, there, did the Robin Redbreast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, we were there when the assassination attempt. <laughs> happened uh but she seemed to know maybe a little bit of what was going on but i'm definitely clueless you've (laughs) she was involved wasn't she like you saw that happen i thought (laughs) (laughs) you've proven that point time and time again clearly i get beat up very easily (laughs) hey listen the amount of time sir i have been knocked unconscious in the last couple months (laughs) <laughs> okay, the fact that I know my own name is staggering at times. You're the I'm very squishy. On, you're the fighter on Family Guy during Foxy Boxing. <laughs> my Puerto Rican wife gained a lot of weight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell us about your traveling companion, Mr. Dacamel. He has given us a letter. <coughs> Dictating several transgressions by you and your associates. Would you consider this individual a man of good moral character? <laughs> yes. Next question. <laughs> good moral character. You know how many times he's clipped my wings? <laughs> I do not. Three, at least. <laughs> and you call him a friend. <laughs> I never called him a friend. Weird party. So, man. what is your relationship? He was part of the group that I'm in from the academy set out to go get berries. Roteris guffaws loudly. The other three look at him. The berry picking scenario is for the low tears. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Well, look who's saving the world now. Dudes get degrees. <laughs> uh, Mr. Meniz, do you have anything else that this august body needs to know? Um, Perpetua did it. Uh, after each one of you has been interviewed, you are returned to your cell and another person is taken away. In between Taryn and Meniz, Noctia was taken upstairs and did not last nearly as long as you guys did. 
Her stay upstairs was brief, and when she returned, she was quite smug and returned to bed. The gnome never came back. But uh, he had a cookie. Right. Yeah. He came back with a cookie. Oh, that's right. He did. Yeah. Uh, actually, before I leave, I ask for a cookie. I feel like I've cooperated. A cookie is given. <laughs> Thank you. Where's my cookie? cookie? <laughs> I need food. You can have a cookie as well. Uh, you guys are back down in the cell. You're all together. Nocti is laying in her bed. The gnome is laying in his bed. Anything you guys want to discuss as each one of you kind of looks suspiciously at Dewey, noting the fact that each one of you have been told that there has An been associate. a missive. An associate. <laughs> Anything you guys want to discuss amongst each other at this point in time. Or with her. Who, who's the narc in this group? Really? Dewey did it. You know told what, me. Lucas? You shut up. I thought we were being friends, and now you knew how important it was that I find Alvin. And you're a jerk. You sit down. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to throw Is, is that what like, you say? That is exactly out of Dewey's mouth. Be, we're having an uncharacteristic, charismatic moment from Dewey. And he Alvin. points at Lucas and you sit down. Shut hey, up, you. Hey. I'm talking to this person. Did you say Alvin? Knackle, yeah. <laughs> what do you know? I look at, I'm looking daggers over that at that asshole. Alvin Knackle. Yeah. Gnome, short guy, like us. From the library. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, he squealed like a pig. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, this guy's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I got yeah, your back, would... Dewey. I got your back. <laughs> so you a friend of his? Don't drop oh, the stuff. I, I, oh, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> Were you a friend of his? Yeah, I made the mistake. Oh, wait, are you talking to no, me? I'm talking to Dewey. Oh, okay. <laughs> what is in the cell? Nothing. And can I break this door down to strangle him? Oh, I, I, I give Dewey my sharpened spoon. Wait, that was probably a bad idea. By the way, I do it. <laughs> I okay. stab Lucas in the oh, eyeball with it. <laughs> you got another target. And then I throw it at the gnome. <laughs> After clipping Manise's wings again. <laughs> with the sharpened spoon? <laughs> Come uh, on, man. The gnome goes to the back of his cell, sits down with his back against the wall. What's your name? <laughs> My name? Yeah, who the fuck are hey, you? Hey, Dewey, it was Hannes. Remember, they, they called his name when they came down to get him. Shut up, Lucas. <laughs> I'm trying to get on your good side, man. Hannes Terrell, <laughs> my friend. Not the fucking Terrells. <laughs> when I get over there, I'm going to pull every bone out of your body while you're still breathing. <laughs> You're gonna have to hurry. Apparently, they're probably gonna do it for you. Sure, if you ask politely, they'll let you do it. In Fink, if I recall correctly, when uh, uh, Maniz was brought into our cell, I used his pin feathers to attempt to pick the lock. I now have a fully feathered Maniz in my prison cell right now. <laughs> that is correct. I turn uh, to Maniz. Uh, the door opens and guards oh, come go. down. Terrell, you're up. Again? <sighs> is he coming back? Uh, I'm, I'm going to kill him. I sport. Execution. He and, guards, he and the guards go upstairs. About a half hour passes. Uh, uh, Dacamel. Yeah. 
Uh, Torin. What? <laughs> uh, there are no, there are no uh, minotaurs here. Mayonnaise. <laughs> and Luckus. Uh, <laughs> I got one name right. <laughs> you poor upstairs. <laughs> the guard's name, Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> Dollar uh, star. Doors open. There's a cadre of guards up there. Um, they take you back up into the same room where each one of you gave your lengthy dissertation on a series of 20 questions. Not all of them were shown. Uh, you stand in front of the quartet. Do you have any last words before we pass judgment on you? Starting with Lucas. Uh, thank you for that cookie. And I hope justice is done today. You're welcome. Justice has been and will be done today. Some more. S'mores? Please, do you have anything to say before we pass judgment? Manise? Oh. Sorry, I did not hear my niece. <laughs> my niece. I have nothing to say. You should have said mayonnaise. <laughs> Sorry, he's yeah, been mayonnaise. hit on the head. What? I don't know if he's told you this. <laughs> he's a prize fighter. He's just been knocked out too many times. Exactly. <laughs> I hear a loud bang. I shit myself a little bit. <laughs> 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 oh, oh come on i'm right next to you um we except that douche over there have done nothing wrong well maybe dewey i was pointing to the whatever his face is there Terrell. Oh, he's not up there yeah oh okay well we with maybe the exception of dewey have done nothing really wrong okay i've done nothing wrong perpetua did it all <laughs> Somebody answer my, that damn phone. <laughs> <laughs> my story, and I'm sticking to it. Docamel. Is that Terrell person? Can can I have access to him when you let us go? You gonna claim the body? Oh. I'll take that. Anything else? Does he have belongings that I can have when when we're done? Some. Can I have those when I leave here too? When you leave here? Sure. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. you. Can do that. Last but not least, Bard. Interesting. You leave me for last. No, I, I'm following the Zoom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, we're on an important mission. A mission that's going to stop the plague <laughs> and the blight and hopefully all this other insanity that this evil <laughs> what it is that's causing. We're the ones that have to put it back. All you're doing by keeping us here is delaying us from finishing the task. You need to let us, you need to let us go do what we need to do. Otherwise, this world's going to burn. And this is not just going to stay on this island. This is going to go elsewhere. We need to finish this. It doesn't matter what we've done. And as far as I could tell, we really haven't done much in terms of that the eyes of the law would see is bad. So let us go and do what we need to do. We're here to save the world, damn it. We're the Avengers. Bushmill points to a guard. Four guards approach one on each of you. Each holds a box. Inside the box are your belongings. The rod, the staff, and the box are included. Lord Bushmill then stands and addresses you. 
Young Bard, you are correct, except that you have overlooked one part. Your associates are responsible for unleashing this problem. Albeit, they apparently are the only ones that can resolve it, presumably with your assistance. You are also correct in that we are wasting time. However, it would not be within my call of due diligence to just simply take you at face value, noting the information on the missive delivered to me, penned by one of your associates. So you must forgive me for taking necessary precautions or not. I do not care. I would do it again. It is the opinion of this august body that you, all four of you, should be in attendance tomorrow as we determine a strategy on how to move forward with this problem that faces all of us. I would ask politely <laughs> that you four attend the meeting tomorrow. At this time, all four of you are free to go. Mr. Dacamel, we will get you the decedent's property. Do you have any questions for this body? Uh, I'd like to talk Insight to you. Insight everybody. Alone, by the way. <clears throat> uh, that's pretty good. Uh, 11. 18. Uh, modified 20. Ooh. Nice. Try again, Dewey. You're muted again. 14. Everybody but Maniz clearly picks up on the fact that Lord Bushmill is not in agreement with the body's verdict. Um, it could be the undecided answers. It could be still pissed from his son. Uh, Maniz, you have taken far too many jabs and uppercuts to even understand anything other than hearing you are free to go. Yay. <laughs> uh, if you agree to attend the meeting, uh, there will be an adjutant dispatched with you to obtain somewhat limited lodgings in the city due to the destruction. Now, moving back, go ahead, Taryn. Do you have anything to say? No, no, this would be after we're done. After oh, okay. Are there okay. any are there any questions to this body? Lucas, will you be in attendance tomorrow? Yes, I will. Maniz. <laughs> <laughs> Look. Yes. Dakamel. I, I might even still be here by the time the meeting starts. I don't know. Bard. My name is Taryn, by the way. You don't need to call me Bard. Yeah. I'm, yes. We'll be here. Or I'll be here. They've already spoken for themselves. Roteris rings a bell on the table. Meeting adjourned. They all get up and start to leave. Bushmill stands and just stares at Taryn. I stare. <laughs> What's going on, my sister? What did you try? You said yeah. She is to be executed tomorrow. Not really surprised. Would you like to be in attendance? Oh, I will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say this. <clears throat> he was here clearly under orders from somebody else. 
I'm not 100% sure this is the right punishment for her. Treason's not the right charge. She doesn't live here. She does not live in Sedalis? She's been a resident in Fulton. This is why I'm confused. Is it one nation or is it six? Sedalis is one nation. Oh, okay. Never mind. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But it is a war. It is a civil war, and you will learn about that tomorrow. What? Oh, I'd ask him, what started this war? General Io. Seems like he's the one we need to get. Which you're also holding us up for because we need to get back to Fulton to deal with Oh, I'm sorry. Should I have just taken you all at face value? When this missive describing in gory detail the death of my only son was delivered to me, penned by one of your associates, I should have just accepted, oh, we're busy, we can't answer. Would that have been due diligence, young lady? No. No, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Thank you. I did not think I was. Except for, I mean, I'm pretty sure I know who wrote the missive since... Manise and I weren't there, and we couldn't give you any details. Manise can't even write his own name right now. What? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, well, yeah, no. Um, now, you will note that Lord Bushmill does not seem to be overly pissed at you, and does. Go ahead and give me an insight check. I mean, that's why I'm. That's He's not pissed at me either, right? Uh. Sure. Actually, if I recall, actually, Perpetua would be the one who actually killed him. All uh, right. Uh, actually, if you rewatch the episode, there were two parties that killed him. <laughs> it wasn't me, was it? No. I <laughs> knocked him out and Perpetua stabbed him in the and sat on him. Sat. <laughs> uh... So that's uh, 14. Uh, you can tell that he seems genuinely sorry that you are about to lose a loved one. But in no way, shape, or form will be moved from his determination. I don't think she's the only loved one I've lost. We need to get Io. He's the one in charge of all this. I think he killed my parents, too. I think it was the six-fingered man. (laughs) Does he have six fingers? Please tell me he has six fingers. That's a question you'd have to ask Moniz. (gasps) Well, no, I... I knew him before, sort of. All right, let's move it along, Inigo Mentoya. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's now, true. my dear, if you'll excuse me, it has been a long day. Uh, the ordeal has lasted the entire day. You guys are starving. Uh, with the other three at the back of the room, Lord Bushmill will signal his adjutant, who will escort all four of you across the way to a very nice inn that looks very familiar. <laughs> ah, my favorite place. Uh, There's a wait, wait. kind of a big hole in the room now. Uh, it looks like a trebuchet got it. Uh, there's some debris on the floor, but... They put up a blanket over top the hole, except for the tear in the sheet, and that's actually a skylight. They've upped the prices a bit. Uh, you guys will be delivered food. It'll be decent, so you can check, but it should be decent food. You can roll an advantage if you want. Uh, what would you like to do tonight? Uh, please note, a lot of the city is still on fire. <clears throat> um, well, for starters, I definitely want to now cast that sending spell. Sure. Who do you want to send it to? I'm going to send it instead of, because I don't want to get no answer, uh, thinking that there's going to be no answer. So I'm going to pick this barmaid. Basically, it's a barmaid in one of the inn taverns I used to play in. Her name is Lilia. Um, and she's a good friend of mine, and she's, I know she's well-informed. Sure. Uh, so let's see. Let's see if I can do the freaking count off here because it's 25 <laughs> Somebody yeah, uh, I like my fingers. You want to be the Travis? Okay. Oh, do you want me to do the whole thing, or do you want me to just be ten? No, no, we'll try. I'll try to do the whole thing. I'll okay, try to go for it. Eight, five freaking words. Okay. Hi, Lilia. It's me, Taryn. Um, 
I'm just checking in to see what has happened to my parents. I've heard some disturbing things and I'm not sure if they're still alive. You can respond to well, this. <laughs> There's five more, right? Nope, that was it. You oh, can. Okay, that's fine. I thought that was 20. <laughs> D12. Let's see um, if alive. <laughs> oh, wow. Maybe she did lie. Oh, oh no. No. That's a 12 or a 1. What is it? We can't see it. Oh, 4. Oh, you beat me because I only rolled a 2. She's dead. <laughs> She's dead. Everyone in Fulton's I, dead. I, Everyone. You can't reply what, to this message. What, no, to be fair, can I actually get what? Now I know. This is not a character NPC of yours, but can I get it like an answer of what she would say in 25 words or less? The number you are trying to contact her. <laughs> 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 that, oh. Dad, the number you are trying to reach is unavailable. <laughs> you hear crickets chirping. Like, you know, like when did <laughs> <laughs> Could I use anime dead through the sending <laughs> message? <laughs> I'm not sending it to them. Brian, no, I you're sending it to Lilia. Lilia the barmaid is dead. Oh, she's dead. So no answer. Yes. But she's, Correct. But she's human. She's not a Delvin. I just by that. She's a member of the Rebel Alliance and must be killed. <laughs> I get no answer. And I'm like. Uh, since I have, scum. <laughs> I have all my spell slots, so I'm going to keep trying. I'll try just to just to keep it going. Um, I just try various friends of mine. Sure. Are they all dead? I don't know. Who's next? Well, I well, I, as I said, I'm just trying to keep it going. So I don't like have a list of all our friends who freaking. How many times can you do this spell? Uh. Well, it's a, what, it's a third level spell, and if I'm not going to, I probably shouldn't burn all my spell slots. Uh, I mean, we have all night to rest. I know. it's Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, oh, I can. I'll tell you what, I'll, I can burn, I'll burn, I'll try to contact uh, two, uh, two more. Okay. D12. Same message, I'm, I assume. I am trying to figure out, yeah, I'm trying to figure out now if uh, that's an 11. I can't see what you rolled. Just, talk, just tell me what it is. It's 12. Oh, no. They're dead. Uh, Lucas Manini's Dewey, as she's given a uh, her second sending message, there's a knock on the door. Food. I will say Dewey is not here. He's checking out the body of Hannes and his belongings. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, Lucas and Manini's uh, knock on the door. Food's arrived. My heart's pounding. This is, I mean, I, I try Lightning and bolts. answer the door. I open wow, the door. Wow, you're answering the door. I know, right? <laughs> Dewey, he belonged to the Derogenous sect. Uh, you open up the door, there's a guy holding a platter there. Oh, well, thank you. And I receive the food. Initiative. What? Oh, damn it. Shit. I'm never going to open what a door again. Door? You said that that was two spells burned, right? Yep. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so, Manis, uh roll initiative at disadvantage. 11. And actually, Maniz, just roll regular, but you won't be in action this round. This is what happens when you open up the door, right? 16. Sorry. Gotcha. Uh, you will be first next round. Uh, as you take the platter, the derogenous sect gnome slashes at you twice 14 and 8 add 4 18 and 12 either one of those hit no 19 ac uh you may react fuck um <coughs> yeah i shout to let everyone know like hey i'm getting attacked <laughs> <laughs> yeah obviously startled and then throw fire at him and that is a 17 to hit. Yep. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Fire. It's been a while. That is 12 fire damage. Nice. 
new round. Maniz, you're oh, first. Al- also, I, I do step back like a couple steps just so not out of melee, but like just so there's room for other people to attack him as well. Gotcha. Yeah. Maniz, go ahead. I will cast Guiding Bolt. Miss completely with an eight. I mean, unless an eight hits, but I doubt that. It does not. Uh, my turn. I will continue on Lucas. Uh, 15 and three, so 19 and seven. Yeah, 19 hits. Use some murder hobo dice. Yeah. Oh, shit. Nope. You're going to die tonight. Six nah. damage. Oh, that's no, nothing. Uh, I need uh, to get there. Lucas, you're up. Cool, cool, cool. Throw some more fire at him. And that is 18 this time. Nice. For nine fire damage. Uh, new round. Terran, roll initiative. Uh, not great. Um, come on. Scroll down. 12. Okay. Uh, Manise, you're up first. Uh, I will go with uh, do, 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 pull out the crossbow. <coughs> that never goes wrong. I'm looking uh, forward to 11. missing with this. <laughs> um, Eleven. <laughs> you pepper yeah. the door. Uh, my turn. Uh, I'm going to stick with uh, Lucas because you're right there. Yeah, sounds good. Two and Nat twenty. I'm guessing the Nat twenty hits. Yeah. There we go. Uh, 10 plus 2. 12 damage as oh. one of them gets you. Uh, next up is Taryn. 12. All right. I step up right behind Dewey and I cast Greater Invisibility on him. Dewey, Dewey's not there. Not Dewey. I mean Lucas. Hey. Sorry. I'm invisible. Fair enough. Invisible. Greatly. <laughs> greater. So remember, this is the one that does not disappear. You disappear and you can fight invisible. Right. Yeah. But Lucas, you're up. Yeah. Cool. 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 So I get an advantage on attack. Oh no, they get a disadvantage on hitting me. Correct. Yep. Exactly. Cool. Cool. Uh, I'm looking. I can't wait till I miss with this fire. <laughs> We're in a little tiny hotel. <laughs> well, then, yeah, you're gonna set the hotel on fire. All right. Twenty three to hit that time. Yep. Doing and investigation. <clears throat> that that is nine fire damage. Well, you guys are chopping them down nicely. Dewey? That's a 24. You find a piece of partially burnt paper. Uh, Your roll is high enough that you discover that uh, there are several words on there, including your own. Dewey, Daka, kill, Samuel. (gasps) Samuel. Uh, Maniz, new round. I'll pull up the crossbow again. That is a 16. That hits. And oof, three damage. Piercing. That great. Uh, Lucas, you're going to be odd. Terran will be even. First attack. Disadvantage on me. Right, going at two, Terran. I mean, it's fair. Yeah. This- Oh. Five. So the second one is at disadvantage on you. So on Terran, five plus whatever is not going to get it. Uh, Fourteen and three. Three is not going to get it. Uh, Terran, you're up. Um, I want to. I want to cast. I want to cast Bane on him. Uh, is greater invisibility concentration? And is Bane? Oh wait, wait, wait! It no, is. I don't think. Wait, is greater concentration? I think it oh, is. It, no, it's... it is. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Was, yeah. Um. And I reappear. I don't know how bad you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> I was scratching myself. <laughs> no, he's like the invisible guy from the boys. Just butt fuck naked in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> don't look at me. <laughs> um. Okay. That's right, you're a fuck pig from that movie. <laughs> I could do the same thing. I can make myself ask for that. Um, I'm going to cast a third level magic missile because I really like that spell. That's fine. Uh, Actually, that's- fuck pig was from the boys last episode. 
I didn't watch the latest. I, I haven't seen season. It's not bad. Let's I screw them over. It, the boys is awesome. I Everybody seen. dies. <laughs> the end. Surprise me. That's what's gonna happen? <laughs> I'm sure. Let's see, one. I can't read my dice. Wow. Okay. So four. Folks at home, if you haven't Eight. seen the boys on Amazon, watch it. Fifteen oh. points of damage. Ouch. Uh, Lucas, you're up. Cool, cool, cool. 19 to hit. Mm-hmm. Cool. <laughs> and only fire, or five fire damage. Son of a bitch. He is dead. Oh. D- D12 against me. I figured that would be like... Alright, four. One. You find a partially burned missive the other half. Cool. What does it say? Mel... As soon as possible, yaddle, uh, wit. Cool. That's good to know. Anything else on the body? Uh, there are 200 gold pieces in gems and a silver medallion uh, linking him to the Derogenous sect. It's worth 50 bucks. Bucks, cool. huh? Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess I... I pass off 50 gold pieces worth of gems to Terran, 50 to Minis, <laughs> and then I'll set aside they, they another They don't know 50 where you're at. Actually, I, I drop it. As soon as like the battle's over, I drop it. Okay. okay. Uh, do, we, do you want to go back to the room? Um, 50 gold, you said? Uh, of gems, yeah. Nothing else with the body that might give me any more information either. A giant stake through the heart and his head is underneath his arm like he's running for the end zone. Uh, okay. Uh, do I know that if I take his head, someone could cast Speak with Dead? Do you know? I don't know. Roll intelligence. Uh-huh. Either way, you have his head. Uh, to do things <laughs> <laughs> six so uh, i never never seen that before so i'll go ahead and well i have animate dead dick into <laughs> head dick sure kick it real good P- penis into the mouth was always a good sign of dominance you return to your room and notice uh there's another body here these guys are all eating Chinese or whatever the fuck they ordered. <laughs> uh, wait, I need to write a letter. Um, I'll be right back. <laughs> uh, I, actually, can, can we alert people that someone tried to kill us? Like, I, I, I think that's something we would have done. You missed the part about the whole city still on fire. <laughs> uh, well, I, I tossed the body out the hole in the side of the building. <laughs> uh, D20, let's see if you hit a passerby. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fair. Uh, six. Lord Bushmills walking along the street, <laughs> but the body misses him. <laughs> oh, um, hey, Bushmill, we're going to need a zone of truth for this one. <laughs> he, he's actually coming to see you guys. Knocks respectfully on the door. Again, Lucas, somebody's knocking at the door. Uh, if you want I'm not answering this Lightning time. bolt, that I'll son answer. of a bitch. <laughs> I'll answer it. I'll answer it. And I just open it a crack, I'll shoot through. <laughs> <laughs> it is Lord Bushmill. I'm sorry to disturb you at such a late hour. May I have a word with you? I think somebody that's... just tried to kill us. Somebody just tried to kill us. From somebody the... just tried to kill us. I will assign. Where's the body? I don't see the proof. <laughs> I will, ass- the window. <laughs> <laughs> I will assign guards to uh, watch over you. Uh, before our strategy meeting, uh, I am inviting each of you for the execution of Noctia down at the docks. Uh, you are not required to attend. Uh, however, if you would like to be there, just saying. Uh, thank you. When, when is it? Uh, crack a dawn. Crack a dawn. Perfect. I'll be there. Or crack a Susan. Not sure which. Uh, okay. Uh, 
he leaves about a half hour later, a cadre of guards uh, knock on the door, alert you. They are with Lord Bushmill's troops and they will be outside your door uh, the remainder of the night. Crack of dawn comes in. Everybody has had their rest. Who's going to the docks? Oh, I am. And I'm going to make sure I take some Ron fruit with me. <laughs> Real quick, having gotten back, can I ask for the contents of the Derogenous sect gnome? Uh, I... Yours or his? The one they killed. Oh. I, I give him the medallion. I... Is that all he had on him? Uh, oh, there was this missive. I'll take that too. Putting them together, you realize that Samuel Witt has ordered your execution. Who's that? Motherfucker. Who's, who is that? Sam, Sam, Alvin and Samuel Witt were my foster parents growing up <laughs> wow <laughs> you must have been a shitty kid oh my god why i destroyed that? sections of library so yes oh this is great <laughs> well samuel witt is the one who sent me to the academy um well now he wants to kill you why does he want to kill you do you know i don't know no, that that's that's fair i mean I'll, i will take and that as he and knows I guess, him. That's why he wants to kill him. <laughs> oh, hold on, Do, Dewey. Dewey, Samuel. Th this guy, this gnome, was with the Drogenous sect, and Hannes, the other dude that they just executed yesterday, was with the Drogenous sect, and he admitted to killing Knack. Oh my God, it's all coming together. Samuel went wanted both you and Knackle dead. Shit. I'm very upset right now, and I don't like you at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm complying. <laughs> Cut. Dewey. Dewey, just take it easy. Go. Dewey, go. if you don't go ape shit crazy, you are candy ass. <laughs> All right. I kill everyone in the room. Rage, let's go. Great so, ability. Bye. <laughs> it, it, it is uh, the crack of dawn. The guards okay. knock on your door and alert you to the fact that the execution will be proceeding as planned. Who would like to go with them? Lead the way. I'll go. I don't want to go, but I'm going to go. Manise, Dewey? Uh, I'm going to go get some food. <laughs> some rotten fruit, right? <laughs> Dewey, I'll, what about you? I'll go with Manise. Uh, Dewey has been up all night just processing this information, and he just realizes he's hungry. Uh, so he'll go with my knees on this one. Fair enough. Uh, you have a briefcase that glows when you open it. I just want you to know that in advance. Uh, Taryn, Lucas, half the guards go with you. The other half go with Manise and Dewey. Uh, as you make your way, there is a rather substantial crowd at the docks. They are all aware of the execution pending from the villainous pirate that has sacked and damaged the city, uh, killed their friends, their colleagues, their loved ones, and their neighbors. As you reach down to the docks, some of Lord Bushmill's men approach Terran. Not very so shocking here, considering. Okay. Lord, Lord Bushmill would like for you to join him. Okay. Uh, nope. They they take you to Lord Bushmill. Lucas, you manage to push your way through armed with old fruit. Uh, <laughs> there is a slightly raised daz here. Uh, not quite a guillotine scaffolding. Uh, uh, I don't think you guys are going to recognize it. Uh, Taryn, you meet with Lord Bushmill and Noctia, who is in apparent good health, uh, has not been mistreated, <clears throat> doesn't seem to be chatty Cathy or anything. Uh, guards lead all three of you to this scaffolding, and they begin to wrap a coil of wire around her neck Ooh. and extend it to the black dragon carcass in the bay 
I am so freaking. Oh my god! This they is... connect the other part but, to a uh, team of horses. So was it really? Lucas that went down to the dock to see the? Scouts? No one saw this. Okay, that's right. Yeah. <clears throat> Wait, what? Oh my You're god. about to find out. <laughs> Wait, the, the the dead guards yeah. that we saw. Oh. So okay. again, uh, folks at home, my apologies. Here comes the soliloquy. Go bring it. Bushmill, Terran, and Noctia stand on the dock. The same wire that was used by her to kill the scouts stretches across the horns of the black dragon in the bay. It wraps around her neck as she stands tied to a post on the dock scaffolding. The other end of the wire is attached to a team of horses <laughs> ready to pull. Uh, they are guarded by Bushmill's men. Lord Bushmill calls for the audience to become quiet, tells them to maintain an air of decorum, and loudly pronounces, do you have any final words? Noctia breathes deeply. Last words? Like I'd waste my breath on this, this rabble of humanity? It was only through sheer luck that you managed to capture me. Look around at your precious city in ruins. But the damage will be worse when General Io arrives. Dig your graves now, you pathetic worms, because that's what you really need. You have no heroes. You have no ships. You have no hope. If you had any intelligence whatsoever, you'd free me and let me kill all of you to save you the worry. You won't, because you think you're doing something lawful, something good. No. You aren't. You people disgust me. You are all doomed! Doomed! Order my death, you fat old man. I'll see you soon enough. I, I boo and throw fruit at her. <laughs> Push her. <laughs> Bushmill shakes his head, nods to the men guarding the team of horses. Bam! They swat the six-horse team, and that wire coil funk, pops her head off into the bay. That's fine. I hit her with the fruit, nat 20. The, the wire quickly cuts through Noctia's neck, and her head falls into the water, bobbing on the waves. The right. dead eyes focus in on Terran as Bushmill declares, Hell has another traitor in its ranks. Hey, hey Frank. Yes, ma'am. I just want to add one thing to this because that was really awesome. Taryn will actually look up before she and Lily, she'll say, I'm sorry I failed you, but there apparently is no coming back. <laughs> Not without a head on her shoulders. Well, no, I mean... Oh, the wish spell. I, you know, like, considering that I have friggin' ways of, you know, getting people out of situations. But you obviously didn't care about her enough to not look for her for the last hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> she had no remorse, so no. She's the crowd <laughs> cheers loudly, emboldened by Lucas's fine throw. Yeah. The cheers turn to screams, and people point out into the bay. Uh, That's look. the head. Three ships are on the horizon, headed this way. Uh, Golden ships. Let's go with final thoughts. <laughs> Carol, what did you think of tonight's episode? Holy shit, that was awesome. And you guys, you guys, oh God, that was, it was amazing to you guys answer those questions. That was friggin' so much better. I expected it to be good. That was even better than I expected. That was friggin' amazing. And I want to do it again sometime. That was awesome. I'm guessing about four weeks from now, you will. <laughs> oh, when we do this again in Fulton. Uh, nope. Kyle, what'd you think? Uh, 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 fun. Uh, it's nice to have that letter finally come back up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It was 
was just letter. doing the right thing. The right thing. Where did I have <laughs> my letter hiding at here? Oh, well. Uh, yeah, no. It's nice to see that uh, something that you do behind everyone's back uh, ends up coming and turns into an entire episode. Carol, you no longer have the longest missive to me. No. no. Chris, what'd you think? Uh, it was a good episode. I, I would... I would attest like me memory wise or brain capacity wise like rocky four at this point <laughs> like we were supposed to be friends tommy <laughs> like that's that's where i think my is at at this point but uh no it was a good episode um boats i'm a bird i can fuck this shit and fly away if i choose i won't but yeah fly away <laughs> Me and Lucas will just fly away. We'll see. <laughs> Off into the sunset. <laughs> yeah. And Ernest, what'd you think? Uh, I, I had a great time. It was it was awesome throwing people under the bus. Uh, and I also appreciated <laughs> you uh, alternating between people so it wasn't boring. Like, we all stayed That's engaged. Great. And uh, the stone of truth definitely made it interesting because there was no purpose in lying. Which means it was all the thrown under the bus possible <laughs> I, I really I, you know I, i've said this before in our prior sessions I, I really hate to take the spotlight like that uh but in order to push the story along uh sometimes it has to be done uh i really liked my speech from noctia um, yeah oh amen that was fantastic i just in some ways i wish you didn't kill her off quite this easily because she said i really I wish you didn't kill off hannis either <laughs> <laughs> There are more nemesi, you know, down the road, but I kind of get murdered in the hotel room after the. <laughs> yeah, I think that, that was that was yeah. I loved the I loved that too. By the way, when the uh, gnome tried to gack us in the hotel room, that was freaking cool. Oh, good. I, I, I'm glad you guys had a good time. I really liked it. I wasn't, I, I knew I could pull it off. I just didn't know if I could pull it off well or not. Uh, and it it looks like, uh, and. The alternating between everybody, uh, I thought, was the best feasible answer uh, yep. because, uh, folks, you know, we had 20 questions I had these guys answer, uh, and I knew they'd fuck over everybody, so it was only a matter oh, of time. Oh, I fucked over. I didn't <laughs> screw anybody over. Uh, I told the truth. And I can't believe people thought I skinned people. I never did such a thing. You skinned people, you son of a bitch. I, I remember. We dismembered them. Uh, there was I, never I, any there was a big accurate. difference. <laughs> when did I, when did you send that letter? Because I have been keeping my mouth shut. Okay, for a while. Uh, let me it see. was back back when the uh, you guys had the problem when you when he rolled into the other town, not Yaddle. That's April seventh, twenty twenty, at ten sixteen p.m. So right after Jeez. right Five after months. a session, I was just like, okay, hey. Dewey is wrote a letter to Lord Bushmill, you know. <laughs> yeah, five months. Five months I have had to <laughs> shut my fucking mouth uh, right. and figure out when I when to play that card. If I knew how to write, I would be sending letters to you. <laughs> <laughs> I put uh, paw prints on a letter and send it. Yeah. <laughs> I just send uh, a feather. <laughs> and Manise, nice, nice comment on the decedent. That's real nice. <laughs> uh, folks, this has been Murder Hobo Inc., the campaign edition. We hope you had as much fun uh, as we did. We hope you uh, enjoyed the answers that you got. Uh, it was kind of fun. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive if you want to buy our stuff. Uh, the address is down there. If you want to join us in Discord. Uh, it's down there. Most importantly, if you want to join us on a one shot or the talk show, always have openings on the talk show. M Hobo Inc. Twitter, Gmail, hit us up. Let us know. We'll get you on there. Uh, thank you, Pirate Dog oh, Dice, for so allowing sustenance. me to kick the shit out of these guys finally. <laughs> and thank you, OddFishGames.com, for making sure our game did not stink. Oh, it certainly did. It smells like uh, Rubber Road. Tavern. I love that. Uh, folks, uh, join us Tuesday for the talk show. Next Saturday, we have a one shot featuring uh, four quasi new players. Uh, one's been on the talk show, one's been on a game, the other two have not uh, had, I'll say, the pleasure <laughs> of playing. We'll see how that goes. But if you want to spot on the talk show, let us know so I can uh, 
bail out on it. Uh, folks, have a great rest of the weekend. Also, don't forget Saturday, uh, I'm sorry, tomorrow, Sunday, is our tri-generational uh, campaign. Uh, those guys are going through the Nazumi ruins. Uh, let's see what shit they find tomorrow. For all of us here at Murder of O Inc., thanks, have a great night, and we will see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. If I were a rich man.